I'd just like to say congratulations to all the squash fans that watch squash TV and follow the PSA World Tour on YouTube. We've hit 50 million views now on the PSA YouTube channel. If we hit 100 million, myself and PJ are going to do a ghosting session together in our underpants in the back garden, which should be very pleasing for everyone indeed. But um, keep watching the PSA YouTube channel, subscribe and follow all the action on the PSA World Tour. Thanks to all the squash fans for helping us reach 50 million views on YouTube. I better go training so that you can see some more of me on there. Wow, I can't believe, uh, I can't believe the Squash TV YouTube channel has hit uh, 50 million. Thank you for watching everyone, keep supporting us. 50 million views on YouTube, what an amazing achievement. Thanks to everyone who supported the PSA YouTube channel. Keep watching and enjoying. I have been asked today to say a massive thank you to all of you out there for helping us at PSA get past 50 million views on YouTube. 50 million views, that is simply outstanding. The Alpine British Open Squash Championships 2013, men's second semi final. James Wilstrop of England to serve from your show of Egypt to receive. The match is best of five games. Well, dead quiet before we commence this second semi-final. James Wallstrop serving in the Alain British Open 2013. Well, if Wilstrop's going to make any imprint on this match, PJ, he's got he's got to win the first game. Well, without a shadow of a doubt, and for me, the way that uh, Wilstrop will look to do that is completely slow the pace of the game down. If he tries to get well, that's not very slow, but <laughs> 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 he really needs to use the height of the court. Well, you, that's an example of what you were saying. Joking aside, yep. he's hit another hard ball, and the Shaw's fed off it quickly and punished Wilstrop to expose the movement. Oh, that is just, that's ridiculous. It's like he had a third racket between his legs. I've got to check his shorts. We've got to have a replay of that at some stage. I mean, that was just outrageous. Just slow it down a little bit, happened so quickly. I'm sure he's got a racket somewhere, another one. Well, the error coming from James Wallstrop and uh, Ramir Shaw, who looks lean and unbelievably fresh. I mean, he's not been tested at all in this event yet. Making the most of Wallstrop's body, just trying to get the uh, legs moving. Well, this is, again, another reason why Ramir Shaw does do well in the late stages of these tournaments. His ability to get the players off in the early rounds. You can see a rather nervous-looking uh, Pontefract crowd there. All four of them. All four of them. Yeah. Huge crowd, that PJ. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as big a fan base as uh, you've got, Joe. <laughs> but uh, his ability to get players off so quickly in the early rounds gives Remy so much energy in the tank in the late stages. Oh, I mean, look at this. This could be a pretty Seven quick left. semi final here, Joey. <laughs> well, he beat Borja Golan, who was the number eight seed, three love in 30 minutes on a traditional court. Oh, my Lord. Absolutely blistering stuff. Well, he's certainly corrected all this... all these bad starts that we've seen in the past from Rami Shaw. Usually, he kind of goes a game to love down, but... eradicated that. He's ain't love. Well, we can't forget the fact that this is a former world number one here in James Wilstrop. Point. There's uh, Malcolm Wilstrop, who is a huge fan of Ramia Shaw. Luckily, his son getting the point, but Ramia Shaw not one to bagel 
a fellow professional. When we say Bagel, 11 of them. He had the opportunity against Chris Simpson. He handed a serve for the uh, Guernsey number one to whack into the nick. So shows his character. I think that's a wonderful trait, really. You and I would probably have missed it, Joe. You <laughs> stuck it in the floor. Well, yeah. I mean, I would have been so nervous I'd have hit it out of the stadium. <laughs> Well, he's hit the ball into his body. He tried, it's like he was trying to do the high jump there to try and get over. Watch what he does with his back. Look how flexible he is here. Watch this. Watch this, the way he arches his ball. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, 2 8. James Wallstrop making the Egyptian do some work here. Already it's going quite exhibition. He's played the ball. <laughs> a bit of excitement for the crowd to feed off him. And up 9-2. You saw some of the movement there from Wallstrop. And take nothing away from Remy Shaw, but he does look pretty heavy in the legs. The Yorkshireman. Obviously understandable, but that match last night, Joey, an hour and, hour and a half of scintillating squash. It's got to take it out of the system. Oh, this is unbelievable squash from Romeo Shaw. You just cannot explain what he's doing here. Well, Will Strop just peeling this. Oh, that is... How do you play that? So that bit of skill from the artist gives Damien Shaw eight game balls. Well, he anticipated, but he was beaten by the pace. Just the raw power from the wrist of a Shaw. What a first game. 6 minutes in duration a Shaw takes advantage of a very fatigued James Wallstrop 11-2 he leads by one game to love Je crois que j'ai écouté squash à YouTube Merci de nous aider à atteindre les 50 millions de vues sur YouTube Continuez à regarder et abonnez-vous pour ne rien manquer Hi zusammen uh, mein Name ist Simon Rösner ich bin die Nummer 10 der aktuellen Weltrangliste und ich möchte mich eigentlich nur für die grandiose Unterstützung bedanken. Wir haben jetzt mittlerweile auf YouTube 50 Millionen Klicks. Also das ist schon mal eine richtige Ansage. Und äh, ich hoffe natürlich, dass ihr weiterhin dabei bleibt und äh, ganz, ganz viele Squash-Videos anschaut. Bis bald. Hola, gracias por ayudarnos a alcanzar 50 millones de visitas en el canal de YouTube. Espero que nos sigan apoyando y disfruten del mejor Squash del mundo. Un abrazo. The residual stiffness will have started to disappear. He would have done a warm-up and had huge amounts of physio, but you know, PJ, from playing experience, that you need to move on the court on that environment itself. And these guys are so highly tuned and fit. Although Crawlstrop basically played a marathon last night, or was it kind of the comparative of running a marathon against Cameron yeah. Pilly, he will still be able to back up to an extent here. But unfortunately for him, just not at the level that he's expected to play against Rami Shaw, who is playing the best squash of his career. I mean, he's so lean, he's lost so much weight, he's got himself the leanest we've ever seen, he's got the power, and again, with squash, it's a strength-to-weight ratio. The, the lighter you can be and the stronger, the better. So can James Wallstrop try to salvage something in this second game? Already he's doing court sprints from the onset there. I mean, he's just being exposed straight away. He's got to play straighter, James Wallstrop. He's got to try to keep the ball to the side wall just to give himself time, use the height if possible. It's easier said than done when the, you've got this uh, predator that's just running down absolutely everything and then it, anticipating as well. Look at that. That is the anticipation. He knew Wallstrop was going to play that shot. Well, he is nicknamed the marksman, James Wilstrop. Arguably the most accurate player on the world tour. Well, there's the one down the middle. He's already... Well, he won't want to be moving like this, PJ, in the beginning of the second, Wilstrop. Well, he's got the point there, but he's already doing work. Physically, he's doing work. I mean, the crowd 
really looking to lift Will Strop. And he needs it more than ever. I mean, he's playing again. It's like Nick Matthew in front of his home crowd in Yorkshire. And he needs a lot of excitement and a lot of energy from the crowd. to come in himself and there comes the forehand boast for the winner. Great response here from Will Strop. just slightly shut out there but it was the cross court that caused Will Strop the problem oh, this is brutal oh. absolutely well he had Will Strop on a piece of string oh he did and he makes it look so easy I mean this little dink that he does here this ball's turned across his board look at that Three all in this second game. Yes, man. Three all. <laughs> Just turns a little bit there. Will Strong felt maybe should have been a stroke. So, Joe, I think Remy Shaw is really starting to build an aura now, not only with the players, but with the referees as well. well you just see the Egyptian doing that uh, funny quirk of really talking to himself. Slightly twitchy. Well, that is a danger sometimes when you do win the first game so easily. You can switch off mentally. And as we've said before, it's not like a light switch. You can just turn on and off as and when you need it. It's difficult to get it back once you have uh, lost that little bit of focus. You do have an ability yourself to do that with your brain. Huh? Well, it's just rapid fire attack again from Romeo yeah. Short. Come down. Wrenching backhand bows from Remy Shaw, dragging Wallstrop up to the front of the court. Half Let's lob from the Englishman, but Let's look at the power Let's generated ball. in that backhand volley with such a short backswing. We strongly advise viewers not to try these kind of shots at home. They can be seriously damaging to the wrist. Well, <laughs> oh, that was well played. Wallstrop shutting the shore out into the opposite corner that's more like it good to hear a few uh, raucous shouts it's not all just coming from james's manager mick todd who's apparently on the roof of the stadium Well, the question is, he has so many options from this one position. Look at the preparation. That ball can go absolutely anywhere from Romeo Short. 
with his kind of sixth sense and knowledge of where his opponent is, at times makes well, even the former world number ones look absolutely more well, very, very average. Oh, that is well played from Wilshot. What a battle in that rally. Wilshot was doing diagonal court sprints back and forth, and then given the opportunity, getting so low for somebody of his stature. Beautifully played, straight drop. Well, this is more like it. Six all. Unfortunately for the Englishman making an unforced error. And out, 76. Rather uncharacteristic of... Uh, well, you can just see Mick Todd there. Used to manage Rami Ashore as well. Asking also to try and manage you, PJ. He thinks you've got a wonderful uh, film career ahead of you. I already told him you're already working in Hollywood, but so he said, why not come to Pontefract? He wanted too much of a cut, Joey, unfortunately. He's very expensive, Mick Todd. He wanted you for the advert for the Haribo factory. That is the fake for James Wilshop, and he famously did the double whammy or the triple whammy. Here's the uh, situation. Back will both, so he goes around. There's the one fake, and then the two, and he really does get Rami Shaw <laughs> with that shot. It was a brilliant shot. And there's Vanessa Atkinson smiling away. She enjoyed that one. And there's the focus. And he knows he needs to focus the danger from Wilstrop. Oh, this is trouble. You can't put Rangers Shaw at the front of the court with that much time, and he's paid the price. Good patient rally, though, from Ashore. Wasn't attacking the front corners quite so early on in the rally. Oh, again, it's that front right-hand corner. James Walshot's renowned for his front left-hand corner for the backhand drop. But this forehand drop from him is really serving him well in this game, PJ. He's equal to eight all. Any youngsters watching this, this is a real example of mental fortitude and physical toughness from James Wallstrop. Well, especially after the first game we saw from Rami Ashore. Six-minute demolition of Wallstrop. And here we are, locked in. Eight all in the second game. Well, his legs have gone a little bit there, just misjudging that. Who was to say that that shot was going to come, PJ? Oh, he's made the error. A welcomed error at a crucial stage. Just see uh, Dr. Alam there, the main sponsor for this event, being treated to Rami Shaw playing his best squash of his career. We're all being treated to it, but at the moment, we'll drop level again at 9 all. Oh, oh that is perfect. Well, you took the words out of my mouth, as you always do, PJ. It's not always just the food. So Malcolm Wolstrop will have to go possibly to talk to his son in between games. It's game ball here for Rami Ashore for a two-love lead. That's the wrong shot. He's in trouble and he's done it. Rami Ashore has made the most of that shot selection from Wilstrop. Pounced upon it like a panther. Ten-minute second game, very competitive. Rami Ashore takes it 11-9. He now leads by two games to love. Hi, I'm Simon Park, Squash TV commentator here in Bermuda for the Legends event. Just to say thanks to you all for reaching, uh, for helping us reach 50 million views on YouTube. Keep watching.
Hi, I'm uh, David Palmer. I'm just here in uh, Bermuda playing the Legends event. Uh, just wanted to give a big shout out to all the squash fans around the world. Uh, we just hit 50 million views on uh, PSA YouTube. So it's a great achievement and uh, let's keep them coming. Thanks. Hi, John White here, former world number one here at the Bermuda with the, uh, the Legends Tour. I uh, just want to congratulate PSA Live with their YouTube channel with 50 million views. That's awesome. Keep it coming. Congrats. Look forward to seeing some more. Thanks. Because it narrows down the opportunities for Ashore and it narrows down his shot selections. We saw in the second game that when James Wallstrop put balls with any, without any accuracy, particularly front left-hand corner, the Egyptian had so many different options and he actually hit different options each time he played that ball. And Wallstrop just can't read him. So PJ straight lines close to the side wall and then keep using, when he's in front of Ashore and he's balanced, keep using the straight drop on the forehand side and possibly on the backhand. Well, obviously on the backhand, but I mean, uh, you know. I was rather confused. I would try to simplify it a little bit and literally just say, give the ball a little bit more air time straighter down the lines and then build from there. It's uh, obviously easier said than done, but that for me was why Wilstrop had a lot more success in that second game. The pace of the game, the tempo was a lot slower than the first. And we know from Rami, when he gets on a roll, points just rack up so quickly. And Wilstrop needs to try and nullify that somehow. Well, how do you nullify a boast, Nick? How do you how do you nullify that, PJ? Uh, that's a very good question. Hit the ball tighter. Very good question. That was a good answer as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's throwing in boasts continually now. Well, he's boasting him to death, isn't he? Oh, this is just painful movements here for... Oh, he's extending the rally. Oh, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And it, it really does warrant a massive scream out. Need to get behind Wilstrop here because he was under the cosh severely and managed to turn it back round. Interesting the movement, we don't always see, I mean he usually does run through that forehand front corner but he's struggling to get right up there, the ball's fall falling so short. width just beyond the reach Wilstrop considered trying to volley this but it was just an inch too far beyond the racket and bounces in the neck so a slightly lucky finish you could see acknowledged by it for sure there Can't do that with Romeo Shaw. It was a poor attempt cross court flick from Wilstrop. Ball goes across court to the opposite Nick from Romeo Shaw. Well, they must have glimpses of that Hawaiian shirt again, then, Joey, blinding <laughs> the eyes. Well, you know that that's my favourite outfit to wear, PJ. You like to commentate in golfing gear. Oh, he's got it nearly past him again. It's just astonishing how he can create such an angle with the little that he's given. This is a beast for the show. It's amazing how he just is able to turn. Look, watch this one. There's the power drive. Look how quickly. I mean, that, that was, was weird. That was really weird. That was like again something out of uh, a sci-fi uh, movie. It was very odd. Well, 
Oh, we're going to have to see a review here. After some of the pickups that Remy Assure's made, how on earth can you give a no let when this ball goes through the middle of the court? It's not even a good shot, Joey. We'll see again from the uh, the replay. The original decision is a no let. It's a lob from a short. That's through the middle of the court. Oh I mean, yeah, it's no, not that's, even that's uh, not ball. even close to it's the side be, it's wall. It's got to be a let ball. I mean, he's held the ball, so he stopped his movement. He's you checked, but then he's adjusted. No, he's yeah, I mean, How have they deemed that as a no let? Well, it's got to be overturned, surely, PJ. Otherwise, you're going to go absolutely. Well, will I'll be very disappointed. I mean, it's an average shot. He turns and he walks straight into Wilstrop. Oh my goodness gracious me! That wow! Absolutely shocking. That is shocking. That was an absolute humdinger, I have to say it. Four all though in this third game. Wilstrop needs to be on his guard here. Let me short. 5 4 lead and two games to love. And if he's not careful, well, look at that. That Absolutely. is outstanding. What improvisation again. I mean, he makes the face there, but how do you do it? How does he do it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Amazing. Oh, he's literally broken his wrist to play that shot, and he's. I think he's trying to work out how he did it. Maybe he gets kind of, maybe he's like kind of possessed somehow. <laughs> he's not human. Yes, left. Six, four. Oh, I'm still seeing that shot, PJ. I can't, that's all I can see at the moment. Gives Wilstrop a little lifeline here. You can see him constantly having a chat with himself, Romeo Short, deep in conversation. a short game that was a condition game going on there the touch at the front right hand corner from both players I mean Wilstrop has impressed me so much in the front right hand corner but there elongating his body to get so low the fight continues six all You can hear the Yorkshire crowd trying to get behind their man here. They want to see more. Again, taking away that movement from Ramia Short, holding and waiting for the last second before he gets his racket behind the ball and flicks cross court for the winner. Lures the Egyptian in, and there's the finish. So, Wolstrop, as we hit the uh, crux of this third game, serving at 8 6. Gonna be a let ball. Eight six. Oh, that's ferocious. He's making every shot count here, James Wallstrop. The attention, attention to detail, completely immaculate. Look at that thunderous width. But it has to be that accurate. It has to have that quality to get past the short. Oh, he 
he's made the error there, Wilstrup. Wasn't really on. I think he sensed that Ashaw was already on his way up to that front left corner. Again, full credit to Wilstrup. Completely slowing down the pace of the game. Lifting the ball high and wide beyond that reach of Ramia Shaw. That's two well, he unforced errors. He had the angle, didn't he? But it had to be so close to the top of the tin because the Shaw was in front of him. So the pressure now back on the shoulders of Wilstrop. seen his forehand this accurate for a long long time into that attacking area I mean he's done it off the volley there he's done it off the floor in the early stages so that tremendous shot gives Wilstrop two game balls Got it. How did he get it? This could be lights out. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Wonderful variation of pace and angle here. Well, it's going to end in a left ball, but I mean, the maneuvering of the ball around all four corners of the court by James Wallstrop, such a brilliant advert for ball control there. And you can see the chest of Rami Ashore starting to heave, and he worked. Well, it's the hardest he's worked in this tournament by far, the Egyptian. There's just trying to hide the breathing, but it's certainly into his body. Keep him up. He's keeping the ball above the tin, James Wallstrop. He'll serve again here with two game balls. Out. Made the error. Decision, please. The ball is out. Yeah, definitely just clipped above the out of court line. Hand out. 9 10. Game ball. Well, points don't come much bigger than this one. Well, he overstretched, he's slapping himself on the head, he just completely overstretched on that one, so that unforced error from Wilstrop gives Ashore the opportunity here in the tie-break, 10-all. Does have this habit, Rami Ashore, of playing big points well, ridiculously well. at 10-8, Joey, when uh, Rami Ashore was on the receiving end of some of Wilstrop's most accurate and clinical shot selection. I think that's decision. a good decision. Very, yeah. very good decision. Remy Shaw had almost asked for a let before. Yeah. Well, he knew it, didn't he? He knew, he knew that that was going to be going, going away. Boy, he's going nuts internally there, Remy Shaw. Will Strop with his third game ball. Can he convert third time? Lucky. Sure, going two footed in, but improvising the straight drive. Well, look See at the it there. Body language of Wilstrop here, though, as he comes out. 
Oh, he is working extremely hard in this third game. Mind you, so is uh, Remy Shaw, to be fair. Well, just extending the court, so a short holds on to give himself match ball opportunity in this tie break. 12-11, match ball. Trouble for Wilstrop. Yes, Len. <laughs> you can hear the crowd. Review. Wilstrop's asking for a review. A few strokes yes, popping out of the crowd there. The referee's deeming it a let ball. PJ, what do you think to this one? Good decision for me, Joey. I felt that the, where the ball was positioned, the only shot that Wilstrop could have played here was a boast. And therefore, the swing is looking for Ramishaw a little bit. Just watch how late the ball is in the court here. Backhand volley drive. The ball was a little bit behind. The only shot that he could have played at that angle for me was a boast off of that left-hand side decision wall. Upheld. That's yes, a very good decision. 12, 11, very, very good decision. Mr. Has no well, the let ball, Much ball staying with the original decision there. So Ramia Shaw will serve again with match ball. And there's the error, so Rami Ashour closes out a high-quality second semi-final. You can see the uh, eyes, he's so, so happy to reach his second final of this British Open, two years running. A lot of respect for a very war-weary opponent in James Wollstrop. So the Maverick from Cairo will regroup quickly and be back at courtside where we'll leave you with Sue Thurl. Rami, come and talk to me. Rami, come and have a quick chat. Very many congratulations. What does it mean to you to be back in the British Open final? Uh, actually, it means a lot, but uh, the pressure is still on. Uh, Greg, as everyone saw him today, he's more than on fire. He's, he's almost a rocket. Uh, yeah, I was watching him inside and he's playing brilliantly. So I have to keep pushing myself and I have to still remember that the tournament is still on despite the very hard match I had with James today and the very high, fast, intense pace we played today. It might have taken a lot out of me, but I'll still push and I'll give it all for tomorrow's final day, which I'm very proud to be in. You made a fantastic start, perhaps capitalising on some stiffness in James's legs after his five-game epic yesterday. Definitely, I mean, I'm sure James, uh, the game with uh, Cameron Pill yesterday, it lasted more than 100 minutes, must have caught up with him, and uh, things must have, must have been not 100%. Uh, but uh, we've played before when I wasn't 100%, and when he wasn't 100%, and uh, we know each other's game pretty well, and we know that... Uh, Either of us can play a hard match the day before our match and can still hit, play really well and can still probably use his hands and use uh, the skill side more than the uh, uh, physical or basic side. And that's what I was trying to do today. I knew and I had the feeling that he might be a little tired from yesterday, so I had to uh, really get in and really start hitting shots before he does because if, if I got in, inside his trap, uh, I'm pretty much screwed. So. Uh, <laughs> Beautifully put. I know, <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, I was, I was, he's, he's a great player on court and off court, great character, great ambassador for the game as well. And it's always a pleasure to play against him. Very well said indeed. <laughs> Let me just ask you this. I mentioned how long it's been since you've had an Egyptian champion here. You're on this incredible run this season, this unbeaten run. Can you put into words what it would mean to you to win this title tomorrow, if you do? 
uh, it would mean everything. I mean, I won two World Opens, but I think uh, the British Open title is something everyone is after and some everyone is, is, uh, is, you know, is dreaming about winning. Uh, it's a prestigious event since the birth of this game. Uh, the British Open has been the biggest name actually on the tour. So, uh, you know, I think we, we should we should give thanks back to Mr. Alam for bringing this event back on on the map and and you know and kind of and kind of bring it in, yeah. and and his love. Uh, I think I think it's great to have such an event like that back on the on the on the tour because it was greatly missed and uh, it's going to be. I think I'll, I'll be more than happy if I can clinch the title tomorrow, but I have, to, I have a big mountain to climb first. Well, enjoy your rest this evening. Very well played. Ladies and gentlemen, Rami Ashour.